be able to use it outdoors as well as indoors. And so we've made an investment in a display technology that will start to come out next year. And it's like a Kindle. If you've seen the Kindle that has e-ink on it, so it's the same kind of experience. Except this is color and video. And one interesting change now, we're kind of talking about this transform transformative effect, is that the screen actually will be on. So today, mostly when you put your phone out on the table, it looks like it's off and it's dead. In the future, because it's such low power, your phone will be on all the time, and it will be interacting and giving you information, collecting information about the people around you and the ambient environment around you and providing that to you. And this, is, this technology will, will cause that to happen. So, okay, so, so maybe to get really focused in now on what, what is it that uh, wireless is going to be able to do in the world. And we've been very focused on this, using it, because it's such a broad platform, using it uh, for social benefits uh, and, uh, and things like um, education and, and health care and public safety and green technology. And so we see that as being transformative globally and uh, truly, truly a worldwide experience because of the scale of it. And so some studies have been done, and, and we've seen these also anecdotally uh, in terms of some of the projects that we've done that, I, that I'll talk to you about. But wireless connectivity makes a huge difference in people's economic conditions. And you can see that mobile voice does some benefit, but when you have full broadband capability, it's correlated to a much higher rise in uh, per capita GDP. And so it's really critical that we get mobile broadband out and not just voice connectivity into these, uh, into these developing markets. And so this, uh, this uh, program that we have uh, on trying to use 3G and mobile broadband technology to grow uh, worldwide is uh, it's called Wireless Reach. And you can see the numbers, 56 projects in 28 countries. And it's really all about how do we use broadband technology, mobile broadband technology, to make a fundamental impact in, in people's lives. And so we've done it in a, in a few different areas. The, this example that's on this slide is really about entrepreneurship. So we focused in on creating in, uh, in Indonesia a uh, 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 sort of a business in a box, a microfinance based business with Grameen Foundation where um, people, generally women actually, run a, a village phone service and they provide phone uh, telecommunication service to people in their village and we've seen there a uh, significant rise in their economic conditions. The numbers are relatively small from our standpoint, but in terms of changing the lives of the people that are participating in these businesses, it's really quite dramatic. Uh, Tanzania is another one where uh, they took uh, shipping containers and built internet cafes inside them. And people are deploying these and the internet cafe is now connected into the internet via a mobile broadband connection. And these also are, are doing a great job, a wonderful job in terms of connecting the unconnected and providing business opportunities for the people running it. And one that I really am really proud of is this one in India called Fisher Friend, where uh, we went, uh, there was um, a tsunami in uh, Kerala and it really uh, had a significant impact on the fishermen in, in that area. So we created in conjunction with uh, local partners and local operators, wireless operators, an application that ran on a relatively simple cell phone that gave them weather information and also gave them market information where to take their fish uh, and other kinds of uh, connectivity, uh, also where to find the fish. Uh, and this one, uh, it's now gone from being kind of a, a almost a CSR sort of project to self-sustain. The application actually sells now for 60 cents and it's become a commercial project. And in addition, the fishermen, uh, there have been studies done on this, fishermen see significant increases in their, uh, in their livelihood because they now know where to take the fish, which market to take it to, and they don't all take it to the same one. They also know better where to go get the fish. So clearly, great applications for entrepreneurship. Another area that we're very focused on is healthcare, and healthcare is critical both for the developed and developing markets. In the developed markets, we have this phenomenon of the age wave, the demographics where the populations are aging, doctors are aging with them, so doctors will be retiring at a time when we need their services the most, and we need to do more to improve wellness 
and improve the productivity of the doctors. And if you think what happens with a phone in terms of your ability to stay connected with your friends and family and colleagues, not because you're talking to them all the time, but because you could. Now if you imagine your phone acting as a real-time monitor and being able to provide information to a healthcare provider in the case that something out of the ordinary happens to you. I think, you know, if we, we will look back in five to ten years, much like we look back today and can't really remember our phones not having cameras in them. I, I'm pretty sure that in five to ten years we won't at all be surprised, we'll take it as very commonplace that our phone is doing some aspect of monitoring our health uh, going forward. And it's particularly important, by the way, in, in terms of chronic disease. I mean, we all know diabetes is a huge, huge problem around the world, hypertension. These things are, they are subject to very, very simple monitoring. And if you monitor the conditions and you keep them in control, the cost and the quality of life benefit is tremendously improved. So we're doing projects now. In fact, when I uh, was in India, that was this is one of the areas that we were focused on. We will be doing some uh, some projects, and I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are going on. So in Mexico right now, we're actually working with a local um, a government health clinic in Tijuana that serves, I think, it's 23,000 people, and they actually have people that healthcare workers that go out into the field with the phone, with applications on it. They do training and they do monitoring. And what's nice about it is that you have a lower skilled person who can go out into the field to gather the data and do the training. And you can backhaul the information to the higher skilled doctor who is sitting in a central location. So you can imagine the productivity improvements that you get when you can really use those doctors to look at the important cases and not just, you know, when somebody has a cough, have to see that, see that person. Uh, we have a couple of, uh, of projects in South Korea. One is around elder care, so we've uh, worked um, to put out these uh, devices that uh, allow elderly people to stay in contact with, uh, with somebody who's watching over them. And I think that's been a really successful project. Uh, another project we have for monitoring uh, various diseases that, uh, that are going through the, through the environment just to keep track of things. And, uh, and similarly in Spain, we have a project that's also around social inclusion, keeping elderly people engaged, because that is a critical factor in making sure that people maintain compliance with their treatment uh, regimen and, and, uh, and then maintain their health uh, much better. So large number of projects around health care. Uh, education is another area that we see a huge benefit. And if I go back to that screen that I showed you, you can imagine instead of having children carry around 50 pounds of books in their backpack, they'll actually carry around a, a textbook that will be much lighter, but it'll have lots of content in it. It will be connected all the time. It will be allow them to get feedback from their uh, from their teachers, from their uh, other kids in their in their classes. And so we've done a number of these kinds of things um, in order to really focus on the fact that the phone isn't a distraction in the classroom, it actually can be a benefit in the classroom. And so you can see these various kinds of things that, that the benefits of it. But we've actually done some, some programs uh, around that and uh, done them in, uh, in China. We've provided internet connectivity to kids. Uh, U.S. we have a program uh, called uh, Project Connect where children who are using uh, the system on, for algebra instruction, uh, they got smartphones, there's software on that that allows them to interact with their peers and with their teacher, more curricula on those devices, training. And these kids improved their test scores by 30%. And this has happened year over year. In fact, now it's uh, been so successful, we've gotten a grant um, from the Army to spread it out into regions near uh, military bases uh, in North Carolina. And in Nepal, this was a really fascinating one for me because I went to the opening of a computer lab that we connected up to the internet over mobile broadband. Uh, the lab had actually started, uh, they'd gotten it all set up maybe three days before we got there for the ribbon cutting ceremony. And in those three days, the children already knew how to get on the internet, find things. They were Skyping their friends at other schools. I mean, it was just phenomenal to see how quickly these children who had not had access to mobile broadband and the internet before were able to adapt to it, and learn from it. So really a great example of how education can be improved. And so we look at those kinds of examples and say, okay, well, what, what, how is all of this going to come to pass? And what's, 
sort of the future of the industry once we've gotten this idea of putting these capabilities into things. And we think that really what's going to happen is that you're going to have this internet of all the things that are around you. That, that, that chip that we created to build the $20 phone in India now is going to go into the thermostat or in a healthcare device in the developed market. And so we're going to see this round trip from an investment that went into the emerging markets actually impacting other, other technologies and other capabilities. And so some areas are things like uh, you know, smart grid, where we're doing uh, projects where we embed a quarter-sized uh, phone. So the phone is actually on a little device, it's about this big, and it can go into smart grids. We're doing things for charging stations, we're doing things for home monitoring, we're working with uh, companies that are embedding these into smart meters for load management and, and all sorts of things like that. So a lot of, lot of opportunity there, and your phone will actually interact with these kinds of things as well. Uh, we're also, as I said, working on, on healthcare where wireless will be embedded into body-worn sensors that will actually talk to the phone as a gateway and off into the network. And, uh, and this isn't actually just a PowerPoint. This isn't a theoretical thing. We've been working with a company uh, called CardioNet for a while. And they've been out in the market long enough that clinical trials have been done. They have a system that monitors uh, arrhythmia. And the traditional way of diagnosing the arrhythmia was to put a patient in an intensive care unit at very high cost and then just watch them and see whether their heart did something. With this system, they put the sensors on, they connect it up to a wireless PDA, they're at a monitoring center, and it's been shown to be three times more effective at finding arrhythmias. And the reason is because the person's up, walking around, exercising their heart. And you can imagine the cost is dramatically lower because you're not occupying an ICU bed. So, so this, is, this is absolutely happening. It's actually an area of tremendous, tremendous innovation going on because a lot of companies looking at how can, you, how can you build sensors that can connect to a wireless device that are less invasive. So as an example, we have non-invasive blood pressure, very small blood pressure, cardiac monitoring. Today, things like glucose monitoring, there are continuous glucose monitors, but they have a little needle that sticks under the skin. People are looking for how do you solve that issue. Uh, we have a company that's done a, a calorie monitor. It's easy to measure how many calories you uh, put out, you expend, but it's very hard to measure how many you've taken in. And so people are looking at non-invasive ways of getting that. So you can imagine you'll wear bracelets or you know, band-aids or something on your body that will measure this, or your phone will measure it. And then it'll keep track of your health, and, and particularly, as I said, for chronic diseases, this is really critical. So to kind of close, um, the reason why we think there's just this incredible transformative, transformative power is because of all these things I've talked about, but also where we're going to head with the phone. Now that they're so ubiquitous, now that they're so inexpensive, these things are embedded, uh, will be embedded into all the things in the world around us, the phone will act sort of as a sensor to tell you what's around you. It'll act as a, as a remote control to deal with things, not just in the real world, but it will also do this ability to merge between cyberspace, all this digital information that we have about ourselves that we care about, uh, whether it's healthcare information that you want to communicate to your doctor or, God forbid, you want to communicate to a first responder in the case that you got in an accident, or maybe something as simple as exchanging our business cards and our our interests here or vacation photos or things that you might do on an ad hoc basis or checking out of a retailer by not having to go to a cash register, just doing it on your phone right there. Or there's just you know tremendous number of opportunities by having a device that can that's with you all the time and can actually tell you about the, the digital world that's sort of surrounding us now. And so, so we see this as a whole new area for innovation, not just on the software side, but new radio technologies that will go into it and new device opportunities that will go in. And then we'll see, we'll create a platform uh, and we'll see where, uh, where all those creative people around the world can innovate and take it. So I thank you very much for, uh, for listening. And I'm really looking forward to the G20 Business Summit and I will absolutely take the messages from, from this group uh, to that summit and, uh, and the opportunities that I have to speak to leaders and regulators and policymakers. So thanks everybody. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Paul Jacobson. Yeah, would you stay on the stage and hand over the token of memory?